How many incomplete goals do you currently have on your agenda? If you're anything like the vast majority of us, then chances are that you have hundreds of projects that you started and never completed, countless goals that you told your friends but never saw through and all kinds of dreams that seem to be getting less and less likely to come to fruition. And it's for this reason, that you may find people roll their eyes when you tell them your next big project. When you start a new training program to lose weight and everyone, including you, knows that you're likely to have lost interest by month two. Or when you talk about the app you intend to make, the website, or the business project. Or when you talk about that dream trip to Japan. This is the way of things for many of us. We work incredibly hard at things we don't feel passionately about just to put food on the table but when it comes to fulfilling our dreams, we are remarkably ineffective. It's time to change all that and to start making those goals happen. But how can you turn it all around? How we're going to fix your goal setting and help you to start living the life of your dreams accomplishing goals is about strategy, it is about making a cognitive shift to change the way you're thinking and it's about being smart about how you approach each goal. It's also about knowing how to choose your goals and even how to phrase them. This video is going to show you how to make those changes then. You'll learn how to choose and write goals effectively, how to write effective action plans and how to make sure you stick with your goals and never give up. Chapter 1, The Most Powerful Skill You Can Learn, Goal Setting Learning how to set goals properly is arguably the most powerful skill that you can possibly learn. Why? Because it will allow you to then accomplish a huge range of other goals. When you know how to set goals, it allows you to effectively work toward anything. This is the key to unlocking pretty much everything you could want from life. So the problem with your current goals how can a goal be wrong? Sure, any objective is a worthwhile one, but the way that you phrase your goals and structure them, is going to massively change your likelihood of finding success. Let's take weight loss as an example because it's one of the more straightforward goals that is easiest to implement. When you set out to lose weight, you should start with a concrete goal. And for most people this will look something like this, lose two stone by next year, this is a terrible goal. So, what does a good goal look like? How might you phrase this same objective in a manner that will increase your chances of success? The first thing to do, is to focus on things that are immediately within your control and that are not influenced by outside factors at all. These goals should be things that you can accomplish in a guaranteed manner and that you will be immediately graded on on a pass-fail basis. So for instance, instead of aiming to lose two stone by next year, you would use this goal, I will work out three times a week, every week, for at least 15 minutes, now that is a goal that you can aim for. Regardless of your metabolism, or of injury, or of any other outside factor, this is a goal that you can accomplish. Chapter 2, The Formula, How to Structure Goals and Make Your Plan. Now you know the basis of what makes a great goal, it's time to actually start building these kinds of goals for yourself. In this chapter, we'll lay out some simple instructions that you can follow to begin putting these ideas into practice. Step 1, Visualization The first and most important step is to visualize what you want and to really understand what you want. We already discussed this a little in respect to becoming richer. Often you'll find it's not really the money that you want but rather what that money represents in terms of your lifestyle or your status. Some strategies that can help with this are, looking at your role models and seeing what they have in common thinking about the things that excite you, your hobbies, the things you're a fan of, etc. Thinking about the last time you felt truly happy, or truly alive. Step 2, assess your situation honestly and thoroughly. The next crucial step is to assess your current position versus the ideal one that you have visualized. This is where you're going to analyze the gulf between real life and your dream future and then try and find what the best way to bridge that gulf is. Making an honest appraisal of your current situation is a very important way to assess your current position and to thereby to get an idea of your strengths and weaknesses. And in particular, you need to think about what advantages you have, what networks, what contacts and what opportunities. As the saying goes, there's no such thing as a lack of resources, only a lack of resourcefulness. Step 3, formulate a plan This brings us to the next step, which is to formulate a plan on the basis of your current situation, where you want to be and what options you have available to you for losing weight or getting into shape, this means looking, for example, at the different training programs. However, by making the honest assessment of yourself and your situation in the last step, you should be in a better position to choose a system that appeals to your particular strengths and weaknesses and that you are actually likely to see through. So many people will pay for expensive training programs that involve eating a very strict diet and working out 10 times a week for an hour each session. But is that really realistic? If you've tried to stick at previous workouts and have failed, then the answer is probably not. 
When you assess your current situation, that also means assessing where things went wrong in the past and what your lifestyle and personality will allow for. And by knowing this, you can then look for a training program or devise one that will work to your advantage. Maybe that means finding a way to fit CV in around your regular routine, or maybe it means sticking to a diet that you will find enjoyable and convenient. Step 4. Phrase your goals in small steps. Now you know what it is you want to achieve and how it is you want to get there, you're going to hone in. You now know the bigger picture, and it's time to think about the small details instead. You know you want to get fit, you know that going to the gym is not viable for you and you know that working out from home makes a lot more sense. So all that's left to do is to phrase this as a goal that you can focus on every day or week. Hence, I will work out for at least 15 minutes every day. Chapter 3, Letting Go of Fear. I'm going to be honest with you now, there's a chance that you already know this deep down. It makes logical sense that you should be making small, concrete steps to achieve your goals rather than making bombastic plans to become a rock star or abstract visions like get richer. So what has been preventing you from doing that? You're afraid. This is what I see so often and it's what condemns so many of us to a dull and unexciting lifestyle. We just don't want to take that leap and put ourselves out there. And in fact, it's easier to imagine ourselves as being very successful and to pretend we're going to get around to it, than it is to put ourselves out there and risk having our ego shattered when things don't go our way you should not be fear setting if you still can't overcome these psychological blocks though, then it's time to employ a technique known as fear setting that was described by Tim Ferriss in his book, The 4-Hour Workweek. The idea here is simple, you are going to write down all of the things holding you back and all of the things you're afraid of and then you're going to present counter-arguments, contingency plans and more to remove those fears. So take a moment to think about your goals and dreams and then write down all of the things that you want to accomplish. Write those goals and the steps you need to take as we discussed in the last chapter and then think about taking that first step right now.